Once again, we're looking at a plane. And this plane is flying in a circle around point Q. And you are the observer looking at it from point O, or it can be the tower, whatever you want to think it as. We're to find R, R dot, and R double dot, with this being R, and theta, theta dot, and theta double dot, with this being the theta. We're not given any information about R or theta directly, but we can find it with what they have given us. So we have theta, sorry, we have velocity, which is going this way from the plane. And they've also told us a little bit about velocity. They've told us that the velocity is constant. That means that this it does not change. And anytime you're looking at a circle, start thinking about the acceleration normal, which goes towards the center, and acceleration tangential. Because there's a good chance that you're going to be looking at normal and tangential. That's not always the case, but put it on your radar because that could be what you're looking at especially if they say that velocity is constant. Because as soon as someone says the velocity is constant, you know that the acceleration and tangent equals zero. Because this speed stays the same. However, it's going in a circle, and the other part of a vector is direction. And the direction is constantly changing. So that you know that acceleration normal equals something. But what you also know is that the normal acceleration is all of the acceleration because the tangential acceleration is zero. So this right here is the only acceleration affecting the plane. They also give us the distance of d1 and d2, which is this and this, and that can be used to find r as well as theta. Then they also give this other r, which is the radius that the plane is flying in the circle. I denoted that as capital R instead of lowercase r because oftentimes when you have multiple variables in the same problem, they can get confused. So be aware of that and pay attention not to get them confused. Now let's go back to this velocity and acceleration. Because we know at some point we're going to be looking for acceleration, let's go ahead and solve for that now. We know that acceleration tangential equals zero, so the only thing that we can look at left is the normal acceleration. And we know that this is going to be capital R, because we've denoted the radius as capital R. So don't just plug in a value because the variable matches. It has to match the definition of that variable in that specific problem. So we have the radius of the circle, and we have the velocity. So we can solve for the normal acceleration. And that is going to be 100 squared over 3. I went ahead and converted here. And then the value ends up being 33 3.33 meters per second squared, which is going to be really helpful to us later when we're looking at acceleration. And we can also solve for r and theta here, because they've given us d1 and d2. Because d1 and d2 are perpendicular, we can use Pythagorean's theorem to plug in the values. And we get 21,900 meters then theta can be used with tangent, 15 over 16, and that is 43.2. So we've already solved part of the problem. The difficult part now comes when we're looking for r dot, theta dot, and r double dot, and theta double dot, because you've done this a million times before. If we were to pull off the vectors of velocity and anything associated with the velocity from the problem, we would get this velocity here. And since we're looking for r dot, we'll go ahead and put this r axis here. And r dot is going to be coming this way. And the perpendicular of r dot is going to be the velocity of theta. Now, this is not going to be equal to theta dot but it can be converted to theta dot with r times theta dot because this is a straight line and theta dot is an angular value. 